Okay, so hello everyone to the second part of our tool demonstration in Amaz. Um, Mark has already sent around a link to the recordings of the first part, so today we have um, the plan session for the second part. I see there are four demonstrations, um, typically having a 30 minute slot, except the first one, which is just um, announced to have 50 minute slot. Um, Please try to yeah keep within this uh, slot, um, so not too long. And I think it's not that much time. So I think the main idea is to concentrate today on the tool integration aspects. I would say. Um, please also keep the micros muted, so the one who is presenting the tool has um, no noise or other disturbing stuff from the background. So the first part is the reuse company. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Luis, you are doing the presentation then? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Hello, everybody. Shall I pass the presenter rights to you? Let me check yes. that. Okay. Yes, okay, it's done. So, I would um, hand over to Luis. Okay, thank you very much. I start by sharing my desktop. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Uh, first of all, uh, Requirements Quality Suite is a, is a tool set composed uh, of three different tools. Requirements Quality Analyzer, which we, will be the subject of this uh, demo. Then is Requirement Offering Tool. We will see it briefly. And finally, Knowledge Manager. The first, first two of them are the, are the subject of this demo because they have integration with other tools and uh, interconnection with other tools. Sorry. Then, uh, the, the, um, the main uh, focus of requirements quality suite is to analyze the requirements quality in regards to three different perspectives. Correctness, uh, each requirement shall be uh, correct from the syntactic and semantic point of view independently from the others, other requirements in the same specification. Then uh, we have uh, the consistency point of view, which is uh, consisting in that uh, in a set of uh, requirements, uh, there is no contradiction between those requirements that are composed in the specification. And finally, we have the uh, completeness point of view, uh, which is the, the which goal is to identify missing gaps in your specification. Okay, so uh, uh, the, as the goal is the, of the tool set is to, un to focus on quality, RQA or RAT uh, doesn't uh, don't focus on requirements management. The requirements management is done in another uh, set of tools. For example, the doors, uh, PC integrity, or some others. Okay, so we decided to be a plugin or a tool in top of these other repository f repositories of requirements. So the goal for us is uh, was to connect to those requirements repository to be able to retrieve the information we needed to perform our quality assessment. Okay? So in 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 that in uh, nowadays we are connected to uh, this I'm going to show you in a second. Yeah. We are connected to these repositories IBM Rational Doors, the Sol Systems Rectify, Visual Requirements by Visual Solutions. We are also able to read requirements from Excel, like they are in a table. We are also able to read requirements in an XML format. And finally, we are able to retrieve requirements from an OSLC specification. In particular, uh, this uh, specification, the only one implementing it right now is DOORS Next Generation. So, I'm going to show you the integration we have done for each of these connectors. So, when we start in the tools, like here, we have Quality Analyzer. The, f the first thing you see is the connection screen. The connection screen lists 
a list of requirement repositories that are available. You can see that there are many different types, as the one I have shown you in the slide. Okay, so we have the connection credentials for all of them. I will start by uh, connecting to to doors. Okay, just I have to change the login. So you can see the first thing I have to do for the first time when this list is empty is just add a new connection to the repository. I'm, in this case, I'm going to edit it because it's um, fill up. And now we have to provide all the necessary parameters parameters to uh, uh, connect to this repository. Okay. Well, the, the first and the second are given names for our uh, repository um, uh, list. And the next ones are the, the ones needed for doors. Uh, the connection is done by using the Excels and as the as the the colleagues from B and M uh, did on Testona is uh, also uh, uh, done by means of the Excel scripts executed in uh, the DOS uh, client that shall be installed in the same computer as the requirements quality analyzer is installed. That's the limitation. So we provide the DOS credentials. We provide the version of DOS repository installed. Okay, in this case it's 94. In my case, the repository server and the port. Okay, and then we, well, in this case, was connected to a, a, a pre-existing project. But when you provide these parameters for the first time, you have to select the project. In this case, this one. And most of the times, um, in real installation, no, like myself, which is uh, sandbox installation, you have to, uh, a lot of plugins on top of doors and uh, that they are computing some kind of attributes and so on. Uh, the important thing here is that you provide all the additional parameters as you are doing when executing those regularly because otherwise we wouldn't be able to open the requirements and to read the requirements and, and show the requirements in RQA. Okay, and apart from that we have several other parameters that are not of, of, of interest right now and that's it. And this is the, co the connection screen. So if I connect, takes a little bit of time. <laughs> and here we see the, the well, I can launch it here. We have two formal modules here, ISO and WS. If I click in, in the ISO specification, here is the same uh, 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 no, this is not the other one is the other sorry for that exactly we have this modules here I saw an l d w s so here we are able to see those requirements, okay. The requirements are in gray, in, in gray and in white backgrounds, means that we are somehow detected that these are not real requirements, but these others are real requirements. And as you can see here, the job is already done because we have analyzed those requirements in regards of the correctness point of view and regards of consistency point of view. And we have some quality statistics, uh, metrics and statistics and summary, like this one and here regarding consistency. We did also incompleteness, but incompleteness we cannot say for each requirement if it is good or bad in regards of completeness quality because the contribution for each requirement can be whatever, but in the end the completeness analysis is done at, at the um, set of requirements level, so we cannot say anything for each requirement. But, but for correctness, yes, we can say a requirement is good or not, and for the point of view of consistency, we can also say it's good or bad because if there is some kind of inconsistency between this and this, for example, uh, we can say we can locate these requirements and just to reduce the quality. That's that. That's the idea behind requirements quality analyzer. Okay. Uh, so if I focus on one requirement and the correctness point of view, I can show you this uh, 
this requirement, which is uh, compose requirement, okay, has many defaults from our quality point of view, okay? I wouldn't revise all of these metrics because they are a lot and it's not the subject of this uh, demonstration, but for example, just uh, to show you, we have, we detect the occurrence of SAL, we detect um, the use of indefinite articles, we use of the use of passive voids that can be lead to somehow not uh, being understood the requirements quite well, the use of combinators, this, uh, this uh, gives an idea, this uh, composite requirement, it needs to be split it in some re atomic requirements, and so on and so on, okay? Like that. This from the point of view of the consistency, sorry, the correctness, the completeness, we, we have some terminology checking, Okay, that says that is incompleteness rate is very high because there, there are there are a lot of terms that have not been found in the specification, it's for the sake of the demo, though. and uh, terms found in the specification as how they the configuration and the requirements coverage. They are 64% of requirements not dealing with requirements, uh, with sorry, with terms uh, that uh, supposedly work to be found in this specification, and so on. Here we have several point of views of, over the same information again and again. So this does the first, uh, well, this is the completeness point of view. Finally, consistency. Uh, we have several checks in regards of consistency. We check in regards of measurement units, and we, we check on regards of overlapping requirements. It means that if there is some kind of overlapping in, in some of the years that are expressed in the requirement statement, we are able to find them and just locate the, the set of requirements that are contradictory, and then we raise a flag saying, please revise this requirement and this requirement. Once, uh, once requirement is uh, revised or maybe delete or retest, retype, we can uh, easily, uh, automatically mean, uh, the, uh, the flag is saying that there is an overlapping need in both requirements, is deleted, is uh, assessed again, and no flag for those requirements. And that's the idea, okay? And this, this is the idea for those. We have several others, but that's the idea. Okay, I'm going to exit this requirements repository, and I'm going to connect to another one, and uh, very fast. Uh, we are also able to connect to PTC integrity. We are doing this by means of a requirement, uh, sorry, uh, a service that are provided by the PTC integrity server, like this. Uh, I will edit. Just provide the, where the server is, your credential, and you have to change the, you have to, have to change the credential, and so. Okay, so you are here connecting, now you connect, ah, sorry, credential again, and that's it. I, very briefly, because we are running out of time, here we can see the requirements, and I'm not going to pay attention to the metrics anymore, and then I will move to visual requirements, okay, the same idea behind, but this I might have to change this. Okay, if I edit the repository, here it looks a little bit different because the, the validation system is different, but in the end, the idea is exactly the same. So you have to provide a credential for a set validation system, and then you connect to a repository, and then to a project. We are connected to this demo repository of surgical imaging. imaging. So we are connected. And that's the very same idea. We analyze the, whenever we build a new connector for a repository, we analyze the, the structure in terms of pro, uh, requirements database, then the project, then uh, a set of requirements and requirements to, to match our internal structure representing this, uh, this hierarchy. And we map that with, our, with, uh, with us, and then we are able to connect uh, by using, in this case, for Visual, Visual the, the API, which is installed with Visual Requirements Client, it had to be installed in the same computer. So now we are able to see requirements, like, like these ones. Okay, I'm not focused to in the metrics anymore. This is for Visual Requirements. 
And we have uh, to another interesting repository, which, which is requirements, uh, sorry, rectified by the source system. This case integration, it's a little bit uh, um, uh, handicapped because the, we can retrieve the requirements from this specification, but we cannot push the quality values again, again in the requirements repository of rectify. We are able to analyze, but all this assessment is, is kept only in the quality database and not pushed back in the, the project, okay? This is the same. Some, some set of requirements here and some requirements for this set in particular. That's the idea. Ah, this important, this, um, this needs license from, uh, and, is, and this needs an additional license on top of Rectify. Let's say that being able to export requirements from Rectify to RQA needs another license from, uh, from the SOL systems. So it's kind of, uh, to, to license you need to, to perform this operation. And uh, finally, we are able to connect a, an Excel repository. Here is a regular Excel repository. If I open it, just I am typing the place where is it. I will show you in a second. HMI, this one. Well, in fact, it is a, a table with all the attributes that we need to perform the analysis and uh, what we do in RQA is just to map those requirements, those, uh, which one, sorry, I got those, ah, ready, AQ ready. AQ ready, AQ ready, okay, this one. What we are doing is mapping the information needed by requirements quality analyzer with, uh, to those columns holding the, the info needed for it, okay? For example, the code is whole in the ID column, the title is in the requirement column, description, and so on, so on, so on. And then we are pushing the, the quality assessment back in the in, in Excel in, in these columns, okay? So, so here I'm going to cancel, I'm going to connect the red link. And then I'm going to show you the same requirement set that I showed you in the Excel file. And uh, I think, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to, and now I'm going to show you, well, this is an XML file exactly as the connection here for the Excel is, is I'm just going to connect, just select the file. It has to have a set format and that's it. We are moving from our proprietary format, XML format inside, uh, sorry, proprietary format definition in, is proprietary schema definition inside the X XML document to archive. Okay, so that will be in the next version, but as you can see, it's exactly the same. And finally, just not to uh, take the time for other demos, we are able to connect to OSLC. I don't know if the server is up or not. Just, just check. Uh, this is the. The OSLC integration is done via uh, web services, okay? And uh, for uh, for our uh, PT, it's a pity that it is very, very um, slow, okay? It, it takes a lot of time, and I think it, the, okay, the, the, the server is not up, so I cannot show you, but I can show you the, the configuration. You have to provide this information, the credential, and then where the provider is and the, the, requirement, the type of element that we are going to retrieve. That's it. Unfortunately, I cannot show you because the, the server is not up right now. Okay, and this is what it is, the connectivity of RQA or quality analysis, which is exactly the same. So quality requirements authoring tool, which is the same, but okay, I focus on requirements quality analyzer for you. Okay. Okay. Some questions. Maybe I have gone too too fast. But <laughs> yeah. If there's any question, maybe you can ask that now or after the presentation. If not, I think we thanks Luis for that presentation. Um, I.
think we can move on to the next one. I think uh, next in line is CEA. Um, Mario, are you going to give the presentation, or whom can I put or push the presenter rights? Who is next? I guess I will do the presentation, uh, but we have some security issues here, so we cannot share our screen. So I would like to please, if you can, just open it from uh, the SBA, my presentation. Okay, Shell, uh, where is the presentation located? Or uh, In the D5.1 folder. Okay, mm -hmm. give me a second. So is it a PowerPoint presentation or? Yes, it is a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, just a second. Um, it, you say it's in Work Package 5, is that correct? Yes. Okay, I see it. Demo papyrus. Okay. Okay, here we go. You tell me um, when I should move to the next slide and. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I have two screens and it's not working that he's presenting on the one screen but anyway I will try to have that give me a second okay can you see the presentation yes okay yes. Then you say next and I push the button okay. thank you so, as I said, we have security issues, so I cannot share my screen to make a live de demo. But I have some news about uh, on the YouTube channel of um, of Papyrus, so that I can click on it later to see some some of the demos if you have time. So, I will present on the main uh, functionalities of uh, Papyrus on the on the slide. So, Papyrus is a model-based uh, tool uh, integrated in Eclipse and we will uh, have the goal to support all the modeling standards that are proposed by the OMG, um, OMG group. So we build our modeling tool on the UML 2.5 and we support all the very uh, profiles that are made from UML, for example, Martin. Uh, we also implement uh, the TML and uh, 1.2 and 1.5 the BTMN, the BMM that are related to the BTMN, uh, the testing profile from OMT, the SOA ML profile, and so on. We also have uh, proposed in WBS, uh, the ISABL and RobotML uh, module language. So RobotML is a module language that is defined uh, for robotic domain and it's based on the ISO 13458 standard, so it's not a standard as a modeling language, but it's based on the standard, it's compliant with the standard that proposes the robotic uh, modeling. Another feature of Papyrus is uh, to be able to define uh, your own DSML and UML profiles to have editor for them and to be able to validate them, them against uh, some of the else profiles. Uh, in Papyrus, we can also customize uh, the, the view, the diagram, and the different tables we can have from, uh, for example, TML tables. Uh, so all the elements are uh, normally customizable. Uh, the palette where we can choose the elements you want to, to show on your on a view. The properties view, you can add new properties view corresponding to your needs. Uh, the modeling um, environment also for the model explorer part can be customized. So as it is, uh, Patrice is integrated with Eclipse, so we have uh, facilities to use uh, the Eclipse-based tools like GIS, uh, uh, ChemDoc for generation of documentation. Uh, we developed some specific uh, model uh, comparison based on EMF compare, so this is the own uh, um, Papyrus complex uh, tool that is based on EMF compare. We have also integration with CDO from the repository, and uh, we have, like I said, uh, GIS and SVM for 
data management. You can maybe, um, oh yes, uh, it's possible in PAP user to uh, have a collaborative work. That means you can uh, work, uh, uh, as many people can work on the same model, so that you have uh, to lock uh, some part of the model to make a contribution, and then after you can integrate it. So this functionality is integrated in the constituents of PAP generation. Next, please. So besides the core features that I just present, we have some features that are based on uh, key engineering concerns. Uh, they are developed as additional plugins that we can have in, uh, we can add to Papyrus, so we have normally in your Eclipse uh, environment some uh, in the expansion uh, menu, I think. Uh, as additional, install additional package uh, feature, and you have many, many of these that are already available. So for, for the others, you have to, we can provide them uh, after request. So there is the one uh, uh, one that has been to Papyrus that is called Darwin, so it's a Papyrus for Requirement Management, so it proposes a specific feature to uh, manage the requirement, uh, classify them, and these um, HTML uh, requirement model. We have Sophia that is uh, the plugin for the Papyrus uh, for Papyrus for safety and security. Sequoia that is Papyrus for, for variability and product line. Compact uh, that is a, is a tool suite composed of a designer and architect. It is based on, uh, it is uh, with the purpose of optimization, configuration, reconfiguration of uh, architecture based on YML model. Uh, we, have we are able to simulate um, uh, UML model using the MOCA. We uh, uh, validation and testing too. So with Arsimo, we can have runtime monitoring of uh, your model for runtime monitoring. And with VRTT, we can. Uh, uh, generate uh, a test case uh, and uh, simulate a script for testing. Let's see. So I just present briefly, uh, briefly uh, each of uh, the components. So Darwin is uh, based on uh, CSML. So is uh, reuse the CSML pro, uh, profile and focus uh, uh, facilities around it. Uh, about uh, the uh, import and export uh, facilities, so we can import some text based on some template from Word, for example. We can also copy paste from an Excel to the directly in the public environment, so we get uh, the CSML uh, table view directly with the copy paste, and we can import a uh, uh, um, files and uh, have uh, the generated requirement diagram directly automatically. So within the tool, uh, we can so make uh, all the facility that is about around the requirement uh, management. So we can classify them, uh, we can trace them. We have the possibility module within uh, uh, Darwin. Uh, we have to uh, define a different taxonomy so this is based on the standard. Uh, and I don't remember the name of the standard. That is the standard uh, they, uh, that provides um, quality uh, criteria for uh, requirement management. And we can export our uh, requirements in different formats, uh, red key from Word, in PDF, using the GenDoc uh, plugin, for example. Let's see. So we have diversity, that is one of the tools we have at the validation step. So it's the formal model, model based verification, validation, and test of real time and on the system tool. It helps, in fact, to simulate the behavior of uh, different kind of model. We can use uh, as input uh, Papyrus model, uh, the second dia uh, diagram, but also MATLAB simulating model or CDS model that are coming from the telecommunication area to specify the system. So within the uh, diversity, the Diversity has its own language in factor to interpret this model and make its uh, analysis. So we can generate test case uh, for different specific scenarios and design the user requirements that are described uh, have uh, values in having input. Next, please. 
uh, as small as the runtime monitoring filter, so we can, do, we can have, we have as a filter uh, traces, so that I can be uh, essential for the user delivery or FM compatible platform. Uh, as more can uh, uh, monitor the, the execution of uh, the model at runtime or, and also offline and is uh, able to analyze our dynamics so, uh, during the execution uh, without some time restriction because we don't have uh, a real uh, um, representation of the clock. So it's the symbolic one. So we will get uh, the, the trace of uh, your execution in a, in a report. Next, please. So Sequoia is the uh, add-on for variability and polygon management in Paris. So if we use different facilities, uh, we can build the polygon models and they take the different commonality and variabilities. From this model, we can obtain a, a different kind of product we can uh, have based uh, by using content solver that's integrated in the in the in the area. And uh, we can also generate automatically a decision model to obtain all the desired products. We can, after that, uh, um, configure, uh, make a configuration of a uh, selective project from the project line. Next, please. So MOCA is uh, the tool for executing uh, the UML models. Uh, we have uh, like a, a live execution of uh, the, uh, the UML model within uh, Papyrus. And it, uh, it's compliant with the OMG standard FUML, so the formal UML, and the PSCS, uh, that is based on the semantic of UML. Is, it is integrated with the Eclipse uh, debug API to show the anim uh, animation facilities over the execution. And it can be extended to address uh, other uh, execution semantic, uh, for example, if you have traced library and so on. Next, please. So, Eclipse is a tool fit uh, composed of the architect. A compass architect and compass designer. With a compass architect, we can have a non functional uh, cognitive assessment and optimization of uh, the architecture based on real time properties. Uh, uh, so we have the validation of the real time properties based on the worst case response time analysis. So we can then have a synthesis and optimize the architecture from uh, the disaggregation. He proposed bridge with several optimization engines like CPLS, CLT, SOL, etc. And for compass designer, we can uh, design from the architecture uh, defined in the compass architecture, uh, have a deployment of the design on specific platforms. So we can also, after the deployment, uh, have automatic, uh, automatic generation of code, uh, like in C++, uh, that is the most. Uh, advanced feature, but also in C, in Java, and in other. Next, please. So, Sophia is a plugin for model uh, for risk analysis. So, we have the module for safety analysis and for security analysis, and this is based on a different standard. Uh, the, in the safety analysis, uh, in Sophia safety, we propose different kind of analysis, like the preliminary analysis, the system data analysis, the FNEA, the SPA. We have the model checking that is reusing the uh, uh, RCMO tool for the runtime verification of the safety properties and the reachability analysis. And uh, we have also um, integration with uh, Darwin for the requirement classification of the safety, uh, the classification of the safety requirements. So on the social security side, uh, it is based on uh, different standards for the security management. Uh, that and in France, they have uh, the first standards derived from the ISO 27001 and 005, that is called EGIOS. Uh, we can provide, we can have um, analysis to define physical threat tables. The EGIOS tables uh, 
a tax free and the vulnerability and threat model. So, social security is intended to give us diversity for the validation side to have on site in fact, define the container measure uh, tables uh, where we define that the component can be washed up. So, we support different uh, methodology in uh, both uh, modules. Uh, for example, in the social safety, we can use the different tools we have and uh, have a specific methodology based on ISO 2622, where we start with the other analysis and risk assessment as uh, uh, described in the, the standard, and then we will follow with the system as analysis, as it has been done, etc. Uh, so, for the SOFIA safety part, we have uh, integration of uh, the model and safety to give our uh, safety artifacts uh, to transform them in um, different uh, language and uh, to, uh, to use them in, uh, in other tools. For example, we have our transformation from the CML model and safety to the safety artifacts to Altarica. Uh, to any uh, SMD to any SMD language. We can also uh, generate automatically the full tree within the public environment. There are also the files that can be used as input for the ESP uh, uh, tool. Next, So about the, uh, a summary about the features that we, do, that we have for Papyrus, so it depends on the module we use. All the modules are not proposing, proposing all the features. But uh, for example, at the module level, we can have, uh, uh, we can import models from ERSA and have to be, and also CMU, because we have a model to model transformation from CMU to a model to CML. Uh, the safety analysis side, uh, we can transform our system model and the safety uh, concept uh, in SMG language and uh, in SDFT language for SPA uh, generation. We can import uh, requirements from those in uh, the Reiki format from text if we define some specific template for the, the textual format and from Excel with the topic. Uh, at the simulation and testing side, we can use having two simulated models, RCDS models, have trade libraries, mods, and so on. We have also different capacity that is proposed with Green Papyrus to Papyrus Core. When we have uh, your CML model, we can make uh, automatic model to model information to have the simulated uh, model that corresponds to this model. We have a getaway get with Autobar. Uh, and also the confirmation from CML to uh, ISADL. We annotate directly the CML model, uh, automatically the CML model with the uh, ISADL concept and vice versa. So for the export facilities, we can export in different formats to so the semi format uh, uh, from UNL, uh, the Reiki format for the requirements. We can uh, uh, have uh, an export of your model or part of your model just by clicking on them as image, and we can uh, uh, export the, the element diagram and so on. We give us some description, and if you implement some specific template also in PDF, Word, and Excel using uh, Jelly plugin. And for vector management, so we, I mean, I think this is a native based tool, so. We are able to integrate Git and SDN, and we have uh, a specific module for CDO repository model. Next, please. So, this is about the summary of the different uh, features uh, around Papyrus. I put uh, the Papyrus YouTube channel, but I just realized that the link is not. Uh, Working, so I send you maybe the link if you can just click on it and you can show some demo of the tool. If you just can click on it, please. Sorry, you have to help me. Where shall I click? I send you by the chat. Pardon me? Yes. Doesn't seem to work. 
Mm. I think it's on, on, the, on the chat on WebEx because I think the link was not uh, Sophia, because Sophia is, uh, I'm working on the Sophia analysis path, so I can involve this uh, demo. This one? Yes. Okay. So we propose, uh, we show uh, quickly defined uh, facilities that we have around the Sophia module for safety and then for security. It's based on uh, an example of the, uh, the pitch elevator. So we consider one block of the system that we allocate with SMEA. We can add uh, different information about the failure mode in the system uh, on the block. So we show that uh, we, when you apply, this is automatic functioning. Oh, it's very quick. <laughs> but we have, uh, we can generate the uh, different SMEA tables. So we have SMEA, SMEA, SMEA tables, and so on. We have different kinds of SMEA analysis. Uh, we can also set the physicality uh, level. So we have different values that we want that uh, the level is not of physicality. We don't want them to go up, and then we can classify the failure mode on this level and have the ranking. So this is based on the normal in the, the system. So Sophia for security, uh, we have uh, the we are based on uh, ADOS, uh, and we can allocate the same model. So we have the, we can have the same basis for uh, uh, all the components we have in factory can use the same UML model. We define just one uh, UML model, and then we can have. Uh, we can uh, use the different tools on the same EML model without any uh, modification or any adaptation. So we have different palettes that we propose uh, for each of the different profiles we implemented, and we can propose also a diagram. So this is an example of the diagram uh, we have for the vulnerability uh, model, but this is customized. Customizable because the algorithm we use can be changed automatically uh, in the in the environment. So for the review generation, this is uh, almost the same for all the the, the features we have. Uh, we reuse uh, either the uh, table uh, facilities that we propose uh, with making using a net table, and we have also. We will also uh, gender for for export in different kind of format for external format. <coughs> so this is another view where we have for the attack trees from uh, the security model. So this is another kind of analysis and uh, uh, we generate directly the attack trees in uh, the, the environment and just put stop so we will not go to the, the next one. So the attack trees we see is uh, um, the FTA uh, module we have in Sophia Safety also is based on the same thing uh, as the attack tree. So we generate the, the FTA table within the computer. Uh, and uh, we can also generate uh, some files that are used in external tools to generate and have a different kind of analysis over, over the FTA results. So thank you. But I will put, I will uh, make, uh, I will add the correct thing within the, the presentation. So I encourage people to go to the Google channel and to have a look on the different uh, demo because they present the different features we have in our factories. And also the different uh, kind of facilities we have for customization. I think it was important for some people. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much for the insight to all these um, papyrus 
um, plugins or modules. So if there is a, any question now, you may ask directly or we just move on to the um, next one. I think next presentation is um, Rapita, right? Yes. So um, if you could hand it to uh, Johnny Woodrow, just above you, John okay, okay, let me just change the role. Thank you. All right, let's. Uh, okay, so Johnny, go ahead. Thank you. Let's uh, see if I can share my screen. Um, bear with me. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to show um, a few videos that we've pre-canned um, in, in lieu of a live demo um, of, of the tools that we're working with. Um, we, we have a range of tools. We're only going to consider two tools here um, today, which are uh, Rapid Cover, which is a coverage analysis tool, and um, uh, Rapid Test Framework, which is a te an overarching test framework, which includes unit test code as well. So um, we're going to, um, if I go through, um, so this is scheduled. The videos will take about 20 minutes. So if there's any questions at the end, that should be fine. Um, we've got a Rapid Cover Overview, which we're going to show system level coverage. Um, um, talk about the, uh, the different coverage metrics a little bit. And finally, how to justify dead code or uncovered code, um, more specifically. And uh, then we're going to go into rapid test framework. Again, we're going to do it all through coverage. Um, we're going to generate some tests with the purposes of gaining full coverage. Um, I appreciate there'll be there'll be people out there screaming that tests all come from requirements. So uh, you, you don't generate tests just to gain coverage. But um, for the purposes of this demo, uh, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, and we're going to show a, diff a few different aspects of how to do that. Uh, we have table-driven tests. We have um, a very powerful scripting language, um, which we can touch on a little bit as, through the videos. And finally, how to uh, use Excel spreadsheets, because as um, I've seen from a lot of these demos, Excel spreadsheets are a very popular way of defining um, data. Um, especially uh, unit test data. Um, we're going to go through the report and how to then merge back um, the report back into the system report. And then we've got plenty of time after that for any questions and answers, assuming I can get the video working um, with sound um, without any problems, which uh, this will be a first for me. So if it doesn't work, uh, that's why. Um, so let me see. How do we... Um, I'll, I'll try and do it through. I'll, in fact, I'll try and just run it through VLC at first. And if we don't get any sound, then I'll I'll, I'll try it. Um, I'll try it through a different uh, through directly through WebEx. So let's have a look at making that full screen. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, if you get some sound. Um, if not, please please let me know. Um, when we when we play this, you should get sound, and then I'll I'll shut up and let the video play um, until it's completion. Thank you. It's okay. The sound. No sound. Yes, yeah, supposed to be sound. No sound. Okay, I'm getting some frantic hand waving gestures from um, over the other side of the room that there's no sound on this thing. So I'll try and do it through. Um, uh, uh, through WebEx, uh, which is probably how it's meant to be done, and uh, we'll see what goes on from there. Um, so let's uh, close that for a second. Uh, so uh, let me see. Uh, if anyone knows how to play this um, nicely through um, uh, WebEx, it would be great. Um, Sorry, Johnny, I don't know how this no. could work. No, yeah, you and me both. So, unfortunately, at the moment, you'll be just looking at a black screen at the moment um, while, while, I, while I click desperately on some of these settings and hopefully get the right <laughs> one. Uh, so, let's see, share, share a file including video from my computer. That looks promising. Hang on a second. Okay, so I've got a little um, status bar opening on my screen here. Um, 
and hopefully uh,
Okay, so that's a that's a um, a video of a rapid cover. That's quite a high a high level view, obviously, as you can tell on on rapid cover. I'm going to show a few videos now on um, unit test tools, which are probably more applicable to the project. And um, these are going to, as I say, introduce coverage into that. Um, if I can figure out how to get out of this thing, um, and share a file, including video again. Um, so if I go and navigate to my um, coverage videos. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven videos here. Each one of them is only a couple of minutes long. Um, we'll play those and hopefully um, uh, be finished in good time. So um, hopefully this is the right one. Nope, same video, sorry. <laughs> uh, there I'll get there. Um, uh, all right, I see. I, I get how it works. Okay. So
Okay, so I think that's it for the uh, videos that we had. Um, is there any questions um, with regards to any of that? Johnny, those videos do we have them somewhere else as well? So um, the... Yes, of course. We'll make a link available and we'll send um, okay. we'll send a, a thing around. Obviously, this is our this is a very high level view of the tools. We're not going into how they actually integrate into the into the system. Um, our tools are designed to be very flexible when we when we're integrating them, because we assume that everyone's already got a system in place. They're already using. GCC or Visual Studio, whatever it would be, and um, so our tools are designed to be able to hook into practically anything. Um, and uh, we have integrations with Visual Studio, GCC, NAT, um, Green Hills, um, pretty much any compiler that we've come across, we've integrated into that system, and we support the systems that are in there. Um, it's also worth mentioning that all of our inputs, all the all the all the setup that you've seen, obviously with the exception of Excel, is um, is um, uh, textual data. So uh, we can access any. Uh, we can we can interface very well with version control systems. We can integrate very well with requirements-based tools, uh, DAWs and whatnot, and any other system that wants to be able to drive unit tests without having a test framework of themselves. Uh, the test framework is a, a, another thing that's uh, worth mentioning. It's, it's a very flexible system. There's, um, it's kind of built on the on the idea that a lot of the uh, tools already out there um, struggle with certain concepts, especially in Ada, which can be which is quite a complicated language. So things like private types, um, testing generics in Ada. Um, we've recently added support for nested subprograms, so you can test a nested subprogram without having to call its parent. Um, basically, any any kind of um, aspect, anything that you want to test that you can that you can call. In its own right, we, we can we can provide support for testing. So uh, yeah, the testing framework is again uh, again is is a very flexible system and should work on any target as well. We've obviously shown host-based uh, testing here, but um, yeah, it's designed to work on target. Host just happens to be a different target for us. Uh, okay, uh, Johnny. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think the last one for today is. The, um, all for tech too. All for tech. Yes. Right. So Mohamed probably you yeah. sorry, can you Hello? pass Hello, the uh, uh, presentation rights? To to yeah. uh, to Mohamed, I think. Trying. Um to to Lewis, is it? I'll tell you what, I'll pass it back to you and then uh, yeah. yeah. There we are. Okay. Ah. Okay, last session for today is the all for tech tool. moment you can go ahead okay so um hello everybody so uh, today I will uh, present to you our tool uh, set architect so uh, all for tech propose uh, three solutions uh, we have in collaboration with the uh, CA uh, uh, papyrus on, uh, which is a model based uh, system engineering we have also uh, uh, Matelo for model-based uh, testing, and uh, we have uh, Safety Architect, which I will uh, present to you today uh, for uh, model-based safety analysis. So um, we propose uh, those solutions in uh, two fields, uh, information systems and uh, industrial uh, embedded systems. So uh, Safety Architect uh, is a risk uh, analysis uh, tool based on uh, factory automatic uh, generation uh, issued from the Alphortec uh, specific uh, FME approach. Uh, it's uh, a tool, uh, it's an independent tool uh, from any in, uh, engineering tool, uh, but uh, also uh, capable to interface with uh, many engineering tools such as Sirius, uh, uh, Papyrus, uh, SCADE, and uh, others. Uh, it's a uh, user, friend, user friendly uh, tool uh, uh, based on a graphical uh, description that can be uh, translated uh, into specific domains, for example, uh, languages, for example, ALO, Altarica, OpenPSA, and others. 
so um, once uh, you imported uh, your uh, model, uh, so be it serious uh, model or virus model or other kind of uh, model, uh, you need uh, to perform uh, uh, local analysis uh, on each block of uh, the model and uh, then to run um, global analysis uh, to generate the critical path that uh, may lead uh, to uh, field events. Uh, and of course, uh, there is a report uh, that can be generated in different formats, uh, such as uh, uh, PDF, uh, HTML, or uh, Excel uh, files. Uh, we are also able to export uh, the analysis, uh, for example, uh, uh, in uh, OpenPESA or uh, other, uh, other formats. So, uh, as I said early, uh, uh, you need to import uh, your, uh, your, your uh, model, uh, so be it a uh, uh, virus model or Cyrus model or uh, CML model or, or uh, uh, scale model, for example. Uh, and then uh, you have to perform uh, the local analysis, which uh, uh, you, can, you have to perform on each block, and uh, it's uh, basically uh, it, me it means that uh, uh, you have to to link your uh, your input uh, block, your imp input block uh, to uh, your the output block uh, through uh, uh, logical uh, uh, logical uh, uh, ports. Of, uh, and uh, also using uh, using flows uh, to link the failure modes of uh, uh, each uh, input to the failure modes of the the output. Uh, for example, in um, in uh, safety in the safety view, uh, we have uh, three uh, failure modes: uh, erroneous. E stands for erroneous, uh, A for absent, and uh, U for untimely. Uh, and uh, we can also uh, use uh, what we call uh, barrier uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 perform the local analysis. Um, and then. Uh, once, once you, you have uh, you defined your uh, third uh, events, uh, you can uh, you can uh, patch them on uh, the output uh, of the block uh, and specifically on the failure mode that uh, that is uh, related to uh, this uh, this uh, third events. So uh, once uh, you have done all the local analysis uh, on all uh, blocks, uh, you can uh, propagate uh, the, uh, your uh, field events and uh, generate, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, fault tree or uh, also attack tree for uh, security uh, view. Uh, we have also, as I said, uh, reports. So uh, uh, in the PDF uh, format or uh, HTML or Excel uh, files, uh, we can also generate FME, FMEA uh, reports. And finally, uh, export uh, the analysis uh, in, uh, for example, uh, OpenPSA uh, format in order to uh, to uh, to perform uh, uh, quantitative uh, analysis uh, uh, on uh, on your function. So uh, the evolutions, uh, the recent evolutions uh, uh, of safety architect uh, that was that was uh, add uh, during the merge project. Uh, so um, in, in the merge project, uh, we were able to uh, to evolve such architect in in terms of uh, uh, security uh, concern uh, by adding uh, security uh, view, and separating uh, 
sec the security view from the safety view uh, in order to allow both uh, security engineer and uh, safety engineer uh, to perform their analysis, uh, each one by, on his side, uh, and then both analysis uh, are merged uh, to see the impact of the safety on the security and uh, vice versa. Uh, we are also able to export uh, the analysis uh, in alloy format a formal language in order to uh, verify uh, some uh, safety and uh, security uh, properties uh, by using uh, code code uh, sol. Uh, so um, uh, now um, I will uh, present to you uh, our tool. Uh, I don't know if uh, you have, there is uh, any question uh, so far. So, um, uh, so uh, once uh, you imported uh, your uh, model, uh, basically this is uh, an example uh, that uh, that uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I I I worked on uh, during the merge uh, project. Uh, it's uh, uh, um, communication uh, encrypting uh, system. Uh, so um, uh, once uh, you imported uh, your model, uh, uh, in this case, uh, this model was imported from. Uh, Capella uh, modeler, uh, Cyrus uh, modeler. Uh, so once you imported uh, your model, uh, you can uh, uh, define uh, on which view you can you want uh, to to work. So uh, safety or security or both. Uh, so um, and then uh, you can perform your. Uh, Local analysis on uh, which uh, on uh, each block. For example, here on this block, uh, I already did uh, the, the job. Uh, so, um, so here, for example, we have uh, uh, inputs and outputs, and as I said, uh, failure modes. Uh, specific failure modes, uh, safety failure, failure modes, and uh, we link those failure modes to uh, to the output failure modes to uh, propagation link and um, and the logical uh, gates uh, and gates uh, in this case. Uh, so uh, we have also this is a safety um, safety uh, view. Uh, we have also uh, security uh, view. So here you can choose uh, the safety or the security uh, view. But first, if uh, uh, when you first want to to perform your local analysis, you need to create uh, your your view. So uh, here we can see the security view. With uh, we have the same uh, same inputs and same outputs, but the difference here in on the security view that we have uh, failure modes, uh, uh, security failure modes. So uh, E it's uh, erroneous. Uh, M stands for uh, malicious. It's a malicious uh, failure mode, and A it's absent failure mode. So. Um, once uh, you have done all your uh, local analysis, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, also um, you can also uh, define uh, your uh, field events. Uh, uh, so here, for example, we have um, we have. Uh, uh, four field events, uh, security field events, and among them we have two uh, safety, both safety and security field events. 
and we have uh, a security one security uh, a safety uh, field event so uh, once uh, you have defined your uh, field events uh, you can um, sorry for that uh, you can <coughs> Uh, you can uh, choose on which uh, uh, output you want to uh, to uh, put your field event here and you select your field event and you put it on your output so uh, once uh, you have uh, 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 put all your uh, field events you can um, generate the uh, propagation you can propagate your your um, field events uh, it's the global uh, analysis and you can also select uh, which propagation you want to to do safety propagation it it's for uh, safety uh, only safety um, uh, field events, security only for security field events, and safety and security it's for for both. So uh, once you have uh, done your propagation, uh, you will have uh, uh, you will have your propagation and uh, of course uh, fault uh, trees for uh, safety propagations. So this is the fault tree uh, for safety propagation. Uh, we have also the attack tree for the security propagation. And we have uh, also um, the both uh, safety and security uh, the fault and attack tree uh, factorizing. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I said uh, early, uh, the objective of uh, this uh, this uh, evaluation is uh, uh, to see the impact of the safety and uh, on the security and uh, vice versa. So uh, we can also uh, generate uh, re uh, safety and security report that uh, allow you to see uh, the impact of the safety and uh, on the security and vice versa so so um, in here you can see on this block for example uh, the yellow uh, uh, flows are the security uh, flows and the, the red flows are the safety flows so we can uh, identify the the impact of the the, the safety on the se uh, on the security and uh, the impact of the security on the safety by analyzing uh, this uh, report We can also uh, generate um, uh, FMEA uh, report. So we choose uh, which uh, propagation we will show. And we choose the failure mode that we will show. And we will have a, a, a FMEA uh, table that uh, we can, uh, there is some uh, things that we can, uh, we can feel uh, uh, after the generation so uh, uh, this is uh, all uh, for me uh, 
I don't know if uh, there is uh, any uh, question. Seems to be there's no question for it, so... Okay. You just finished perfect in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, then um, I think I could just say thank you for coming today, joining the session. I think we again have seen the diversity of tools which we have in MS. Um, similar to the last one, I will um, record this session, store it to a server and send the link around so you can pass it down to other people in your company or other members of the MS project. Okay, thanks again, and have a good afternoon today. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.